even after losing four nil last year against Brentford, we somehow played worse against them last night. This spineless Manchester United team were dominated by Brentford in every single department. Just look at these stats; it's awful. They had so many shots despite not having that much possession. And not only that, look at the attack that we did not create anything. It was all Brentford traffic. And don't even talk to me about XG. Just, have you ever seen Brentford dominating a team like this? A big team like this? I've never seen it. Brentford could have easily scored five goals. Easily. Tony missed an easy 1v1 one one, which he hit the post. Visa hit the bar. And then they hit the bar and post two more times. Four times they hit the post. That's crazy and they didn't score. In addition to this, Onana had to pull off a crazy and insane double save. And even then, the score was nil-nil. The most obvious question comes out, why? Why after such a good performance against Liverpool that we did it like this? And the answer is actually pretty easy. One is that we are just the most inconsistent team in the league. We can defeat Liverpool one week, then lose to Fulham. We can defeat Arsenal, lose to Brentford. It's just... You don't know which Manchester United side is going to come up in the match. We just, we just don't know. Another fact which people might not consider is that Brentford is our worst matchup. In the fact that Brentford play a low block and we can't ever play a low block. We just don't know how to deal with a low block. Not only that, Brentford are really good at set pieces. And we are the worst team at set pieces in, in the league. They wanted it so much more than us. They were winning every single second ball, third ball. They just kept position. They just kept us pinned in our own half. They just kept winning the ball back because our players did not want it enough. And the, the fact that Brentford actually have a decent midfield. They play a mid-block, right? Three at the back, five in the midfield, two up top. That just sparks a lot of the traffic in the midfield. And as you know, we have a worse midfield structure in like a decade. Our midfield has no idea what's going on, what to do, when to press, when to defend. And what, is, what ends up happening? Bruno and McTominay runs up ahead and Main was left to defend alone. As we have seen over the whole season. And it hasn't improved at all. So it's obvious that Benfield was going to dominate us. And that's what happened. If you have liked my video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you can click on the like and subscribe button below. To be notified of my future uploads and to be part of my growing community. At the end of the match, Benford had 85 touches in our own box. And that's the most touches a team has had in an opponent's puck in the last three seasons. And the reason for that is because of weak midfield structure. McTominay is ghosting. If I didn't know that McTominay was on the team sheet, right, I wouldn't have even noticed him in this game. Bruno had his probably the worst game of the season. He couldn't pass the ball. He couldn't shoot the ball. Like, for some reason, Bruno kept shooting from 30 yards. And all of those shots were like really, really team. Like, they were not threatening at all. Then, Minu also didn't have a good game, but that's obvious. He's left alone to, to defend. Like, what can he do when he's the lone midfielder to hold the midfield against four of Brentford's midfielders? The question here comes is, why was he not subbing Ericsson or Amrabat? Like, why did we even get Amrabat if he's not going to play? Casemiro is injured or like coming back from injury, right? And Bruno is not playing well. We have two replacements on the bench who are fit. Amrabat and Eriksen. Yet, they both weren't subbed off. If we had subbed on Eriksen and Amrabat, right, earlier in the game, I think we would have played much better because they are two completely different player profiles. But Ten Hag is just being too stubborn. Either he's being stubborn or he's afraid of the player power. Like, for some reason... He's not doing the most obvious changes which he used to do last season. And it's not only the problem of the midfield. Our attack didn't do anything either. Rashford had a bad game where he just cuts in and shoots. But every, everybody knows he does that. And so it doesn't result in anything. Garnacho had a bad game. I think Garnacho is just too tired. He even played a game on Tuesday uh, in the international break. And in this game, he just felt like all of his touches were just bad. Right, they were heavy touches. He couldn't dribble. He couldn't cross. I think so. Sorry for the hurling because it just looks like he's living on minimum wage. Right, he doesn't get passes. He doesn't get crosses. The only time Holland gets a pass is only through a long ball from Onana, right, which he isn't developed enough to hold the ball onto. 
द ओनली टाइम ऑनाना हैड अ चांस क्रिएटेड फॉर हिम राइट इवन एट दैट पॉइंट फ्लैक इन मेड एन इन सीन सेव टू डिना हिम बट आई कॉन्ट रिमेंबर इन ये द चांसेस मेड फॉर हॉय इन एज यू शूड नाउ वी हैव स्टॉप्ड ब्रेनफोर्ड फॉर नाइनटी फाइव मिनट्स एंड वी हैव स्कोर्ड द मोस्ट शेमलेस गोल थ्रू माउंट राइट माउंट स्कोर्ड अ ग्रेट गोल राइट ही टेड अवे वेरी नीडली एंड एट नाइनटी सिक्स With four minutes to go, we all thought that finally we can get a shameless win, right? But no, of course, the mentality crumbles. As soon as you score a goal, it's a rule at this point that we're going to concede. And lo and behold, we conceded. The silliest thing about this goal is that Bissaka kept all of them on side, all of them. If Bissaka was more aware, right, he would have pushed up. Brentford would have been on side. We would have won. But To be honest, Brentford didn't deserve to lose, right? We were just being shameless, trying to get a win. Now we have conceded a hundred and six shots in just the last four games. No matter which team it is, if you are giving them twenty-five shots on average every game, even Coventry City might score against us at this rate. Like, how can you justify conceding so many shots game after game after game? Ten, I'm still, I still think Ten Hag is the right manager. I still think sacking him won't solve anything, but it's very clear that his tactics, if there are any, that they aren't working. Either he's being too stubborn with his players, with his tactics, or he's too afraid to do anything, and he's just sticking to the players he trusts. But it's obvious that at this point of time, he needs to change something if he wants to save his job. Because the Champions League is already gone at this point, you are you are way too behind Spurs and let alone Arsenal, eight points behind them, and we don't even have to concentrate on other teams. Just look at our own fixtures. We have Chelsea away, and we all know how bad our away form is. Yes, Chelsea are bottlers. Yes, Chelsea are playing bad, but we are worse. The only way we can win against Chelsea if Chelsea plays worse than us. If they play even slightly better than us, they'll they'll defeat us. Then we have Liverpool at home, and we all know how that goes usually. We have Burnley out away, which is again a very tough match. Burnley out made an insane comeback before the international break, and Solanke is in red or form. Then we have Newcastle at home. We haven't defeated Newcastle ever since we defeated them in the Carabao Cup. We have lost to them every time we have played them in the last season. So. It's a very real possibility that out of the next four games, that we might lose all four. That's that can really happen, and at that point, I don't think anything saves Ten Hag from get, getting sacked. So if Ten Hag wants this job, don't start McTominay in the starting eleven. Try to sub off Bruno. Try to sub off Rashford, Garnacho earlier, right? And one more thing which Ten Hag can't control is injuries. Just when we had Maguire and Martinez back fit, Varane and then the middle of course of injury. It's just this season is just weird, right? I don't know what's happening, why is it happening, but at this point, just get through the season, play a little bit better. That's all the fans are expecting, just a little bit better. But whether it happens or not, we just don't know. Now, if you've watched my video so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like. And subscribe button below. It would really help me out to grow the community. And if you want to change your mood to see at a happier picture, then please click on the video right here, which gives us the match reaction of when we smashed Liverpool and we sent them back home crying. It it was such a good mood back then. I'll see you all again after the Chelsea match probably. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.